blueprints, the first thing that comes to my mind is one name, Edward Tolman. Edward Tolman was a, a famous American psychologist who has contributed to science from different perspectives, but mainly contributing to learning and memory, trying to understand the cognitive processes involved in learning and memory and the brain mechanisms supporting these very, very important skills. He published a few seminal papers, and one of these was published in 1948. The title of this paper was Cognitive Maps in Rats and Men. The main point that he made in this paper is that when we move within the environment, we may learn how to go from A to B by performing a specific pathway, but at the same time, we learn about the environment. And we learn where things are with respect to us, but most importantly, where things are with respect to one another. This is an important fundamental skill that allows rats and humans to find their way around without getting lost. Now, this is one of the experiments that he presented in this paper. In these experiments, what he did, he basically let, this is a top view uh, representation of an apparatus where the rats were dropped here at the bottom of these corridors. They traveled all along the first part of the corridor. They uh, went into this arena. They found the second corridor. They uh, followed this pathway, they reached the box, they received some food. A very simple thing to do, it's not a very complex maze, but it still takes three, four days for rats to get very confident traveling from a starting point to an end uh, location without any hesitation. After these three, four days, same rats were dropped in a, uh, uh, oops, in a different, um, in a different uh, uh, apparatus where the first part was identical to the previous one. So rats were dropped here. They followed the first corridor. They saw the arena. They recognized the same corridor where uh, they went in the previous part. They went in, and it was blocked. So they came back. They go to the center of the arena. And something very, very interesting happened at this point. So the rats look around, and they all take the arm number six. They have never traveled in this uh, new labyrinth, but they all took arm number six, the same arm, the same corridor that took them exactly in the same spot they, where they have received food in the previous study. And so the idea that uh, uh, Tolman had is that this is a very, very strong evidence that you don't just learn about a specific pathway, but you learn about the environment in general. So now, obviously, we live in different cages and different environments. And we have still a lot of paths that we perform throughout our days. So we may live in a building and go to university, or may live like a, in a workplace and it's like close to where our home is. We go to the grocery store. We travel so much. And so the idea is that you cannot remember all these pathways one by one. You cannot really remember sequences of left and right body turns, which, by the way, is a very uh, easy way to remember how to go from A to B. So there are so many pathways that we travel throughout the day that it's very important, basically, for all of us to have a different tool. So this tool is a cognitive map. So a cognitive map is a dynamic tool. It's a solution that we have in our brain in order to uh, represent the environment we, have, we, we, we walk through, represent the environments where we navigate, becoming familiar with the environments, and have a mental representation of where things are around with respect to one another. It's a very simple and it's a very important uh, tool we have. We don't need to remember so many different pathways. It's so quick, the process, that it would take like a fraction of a second. You are here now. You needed to go to the washroom. In 200 milliseconds, you, re you visualize where you are. You think about where the washroom is. You just turn and go. So it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic tool. So a cognitive map is a mental representation of the environment that allows you to go anywhere from anywhere you are without getting lost. Fantastic, but it's not really entirely true, how you would tell me, right? So we all get lost. We all get, we all have some challenge in finding our way around. It's not that simple for us to get familiar with an environment. You know, sometimes environments are very complex. So it's not entirely true. So what's happening? Well, what's happening is that there is a huge variability in each of us in the ability of forming and the ability of making use of these mental maps, these cognitive maps. And some data we have provided in our laboratory show that if you take a group of very young students and ask them to move within a virtual environment, 
very simple one, a three by three block virtual city with four buildings, very uh, uh, specific buildings like a cinema, like a, a restaurant, a bank, and so on. And you ask that to move around and try to represent where these four buildings are with respect to one another, well, what you find is a huge variability. Someone will learn in a second, in a minute. Someone else 10 minutes to form the same kind of maps. 10 minutes, one minute is a huge difference. So what's happening? There is a huge difference. Well, guess what? If everyone really gets uh, to the kind of map, no matter how long people spend in the environment, there is still a huge variability in the ability of using this kind of map. So if you ask all those people again to go from place to place, you find that someone short, uh, travels very short distances, someone takes longer, so there is a huge variability. So where is the issue? Why there is this huge variability? Well, there are obviously so many different factors that contribute to this variability. We have investigated some of them that are relevant to all of us. So aging has an effect. Age has an effect on our ability to form and make use of kind of maps. Why? Well, maybe because the ability of navigating and finding your way around is a very complex kind of skill. So it requires the entire brain. And therefore, aging has an effect on this kind of behaviors because it really affects the entire brain in a very, in a very specific way. Um, we have shown with some data that by the age of 45, 46, so extremely young people, very young people, 45, 46, it's hard for you to think that 45, 46 uh, years old people are very young, but believe me, they are really young. Uh, they start decline in the ability of forming and making use of cognitive maps. Now, gender is another factor that really contributes to the variability. Women, they spend more time than men in forming kind of maps, and they make more errors and, uh, and uh, travel more distance in order to find places within the environment. But at the end of the day, the story is that we all differ in terms of these skills, but at the end of the day, you find your way around. You find your place, you may spend a little bit more time. If you move to a new town, you may spend more time to become familiar with the environment, but you do find your way around. But what happens if you are not able to form kind of maps? Just imagine for a second, you are not able to form kind of maps. What will happen to you? Well, that would be a little bit of a challenging life. You will get lost in extremely familiar surroundings. Your own home, your own neighborhood where you actually have lived your entire life, your workplace, your kids will start telling you where to go. You will not be able to trust your GPS anymore because even if you have a GPS, you actually can't really make sense of where this GPS is taking you. It's kind of a weird feeling. You will start uh, experiencing humiliation, frustration, stress, anxiety. It's a huge challenge. Well, this is not unreal. This is the condition of people who we have described having developmental topographical disorientation. So people who have been challenged their entire life, they have no skills in terms of forming kind of maps. <coughs> Therefore, they get lost in extremely familiar surroundings from childhood. And in the absence of any other kind of complaints or any other neurological condition, these people have no memory problem, no attentional problem. They don't have any other neurological condition. They don't complain about anything else. They are smart like all of us. They do a variety of things in their life. They are just unable to form kind of maps. And so they get lost on a daily basis in the most familiar surroundings, even their own, their own house. Now, one thing to keep in mind is uh, being affected by developmental topographical disorientation has absolutely nothing to do with having a poor sense of direction. It's something that goes outside of this, of this scale. So what's happening to the brain of these people affected by developmental topographical disorientation? Well, if you take the brain of a person with DTD and a person with no orientation problems, and you look at this brain, and you look at the anatomy of the brain, the morphology of the brain, there are no differences. If you use very sophisticated neuroimaging techniques and you look at volumes of specific regions in the brain that you know they are very, very important for spatial orientation, there are no differences. So there are no differences in volumes, there are no differences in, uh, in the anatomy of the brain, there are obviously no damages. The only difference that we were able to document 
in groups of these uh, people affected by DTD, it was a decreased functional connectivity between the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. Now, the hippocampus is a region within the medial uh, uh, temporal lobe, which is very, very important for learning and memory. And it has been shown for many, many uh, studies that it's very, very important for spatial orientation. The prefrontal cortex is a region that's very, very important for a variety of executive functions, like decision-making skills, mental imagery, working memory, attention. All these are very, very important skills that are important when you move within the environment. You try to become familiar with the environment. So very, very important skills. So what is this decreased functional connectivity? It's simply these two regions are not communicating well. They are not engaged well when people are moving within the environment. And so the information that is processed while we are moving around is not really uh, transferred very nicely to the medial temporal structure. So it doesn't really help in order to create this sort of long-term memory maps of the environment. There is nothing wrong within the hippocampus. There is nothing wrong within the, the prefrontal cortex as you know, like, uh, provided by the fact that these people have no memory problem, no decision-making skills problems. But there is a problem in terms of communication between these two regions when they are actually moving within, within the environment. Now, can someone inherit DTD? Yes. Our data show that if someone has DTD, one of his or her parents had DTD, and chances that a child will have DTD is 50%. So obviously we are focusing on the genetics of these studies, trying to identify the genes, the mutation that are related to this condition, because it will help us to understand a little bit more how to help these people. So the message is cognitive maps are extremely important for spatial orientation and navigation. There are so many ways you can learn your way within the environment. You can follow pathway based on body turns, which are very, very effective, by the way, when you move in a very, um, uh, in a very like, a usual pathway. It's called procedural memory. You don't really need to think about anything. You just go in a very automatic way. There are other ways you can learn, you can move within the environment by remembering, for example, like direct, direction according to specific landmarks. So many different ways you can move within the environment. But the ability of mentally represent where things are around you is crucial for finding your way around. Now, I'm not entirely sure they are blue, but definitely there are certain maps you can leave home without. Thank you.